Okay, I'm dropping it. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. So right now I'm in a place called the Isla de las Mujeres, right next to Cancun. There's this place called the Underwater Museum, where there's a bunch of statues buried down to kind of help, you know, the wildlife and stuff under the ocean. Normally when I review drones, they're the kind of drones that fly around in the air. Today, we have an underwater drone that films things underwater in 4K. Should be pretty interesting. So after we check out the footage, we'll take the drone apart and see what the water protection is actually like. Let's get started. One of the things that's really hard with this actually, because like with the drone, you can actually see which way it's oriented in the sky, you know, the lights on the propellers and stuff like that. With this, you don't really know what direction it's going when you're in the water, because there's no way to like orient yourself, except for when it reaches the surface. Inside of the box, we have the drone itself. This thing is legit. Here, we have one of the vents for the propellers. So when it's sinking down, it's sucking the water up and shooting it out the top of the drone. Then we have the connector here, which goes to the tether into the battery pack and the signal where it stores all the information. We have the propellers in the back here. Underneath the drone, here's the propeller that brings it up and down. This is a sonar fish finder. It tells us the water temperature and finds fish down to 130 feet. And then this is a little magnet on the front. So if you have like bait or something you need to drop while fishing, you can just release this from the controller and drop the bait. In the front of the drone, we have two headlights, LED looks like, and then we have a 4K camera. And that camera's on a two axis gimbal. The tether's 225 feet and it goes into that receiver there. And then the controller is kind of like the DJI setup where you have the mount for your phone and then you have the controllers there on the side. Pretty sweet. So this thing right here is called the base station. It's actually like the Wi-Fi emitter because signals underwater don't travel. So Bluetooth and Wi-Fi just don't work underwater very far. So with the tethering cord, that's why we have that. And then this transmits Wi-Fi into the controller just like the DJI controller does. Data storage for like the footage and things, that's all stored inside the drone with internal storage. So there's no removable SD card slot. What makes sense though, because the whole thing is waterproof instead of water resistant. So having the SD card slot would have been really inconvenient as far as waterproofing that goes. One of the hugest perks about this whole setup though is that the charging port which is also the same thing for the tether the battery inside of this thing can last for two hours imagine a drone in the sky being able to last that long probably one of the reasons the battery lasts so long is that the water is holding most of the weight of the drone and it doesn't need to like support itself in the sky and the propellers are pretty small okay i'm dropping it ready yeah go ahead flying the drone you can't go left and right to circle around something you can only go forward and back and then like twist the front left and right so it's a little bit different than flying in the air so it does make things a little bit harder to control but it's not too bad okay. this thing lights up blue but like I was explaining earlier like it doesn't really orient yourself when you're in the water because you literally can't see it so basically you're just looking around you in the water maybe you can find the bottom of the boat you're in but it's really hard to tell like distance and stuff when you're flying this underwater <laughs> So now that we've seen what this can do and we've explored the outside of it, you know it's time to explore the inside. Let's take this thing apart and see what makes it so waterproof. One thing to remember as we take apart this power ray is that it's waterproof to 30 meters, or 98 feet depending on what part of the world you're diving in. Water resistant cell phones like the iPhone or the Galaxy phones are only water resistant to one or one and a half meters. That's a huge difference. It'll be interesting to see what's inside. There are seven screws holding down the exterior plastics. These are mostly for decoration and physical protection since there's no waterproofing around the exterior edges. It'll unsnap from the lower body exposing the more important components. There are some weights attached to the lower shell. This might be to keep it oriented in the water, bottom side down, or it might also be because this is a pre-production unit that isn't quite finished. 
There is a final version for sale on Amazon today already, and I'll link that in the description, but this one's just a functional prototype. The three different propellers are now exposed. All of the motors are concealed inside the watertight black plastic housing. The other side of the white shell can also pull away from the watertight internals, and now it's definitely looking more like a submarine than a drone. There are a total of 46 hexagonal 2.0 screws holding the two plastic halves together. After all those screws are out, the top half can lift away. There's still wires attached to that top tethering point. As far as waterproofing goes, a thick green rubber ring surrounds the entire outer lip of the power ray. That rubber gets smashed by the 46 screws around the edge, keeping all the water from ingressing. There's also a shiny grease covering that outer lip as well. Water and oily substances don't mix, so there's multiple waterproofing barriers at work here. There are four screws holding down the main board to the plastic body, and this would be a good time to mention that anytime you take something waterproof or water resistant apart, it'll never be water resistant again until it's resealed. So with this particular project, I don't plan on reassembling this drone since it's already been compromised. I'll just keep it for parts. I unplugged a few of the signal cables. Interestingly enough, there's an ethernet port on the motherboard. That explains the long tether and how that signal works. I've never seen that inside of a drone before. There are a few more plugs leading off for the fish finders and front camera, and then the whole motherboard lifts off exposing the battery. Now this is pretty interesting. The battery that's held in place by the four smaller hexagonal 1.5 screws is the same battery that fits inside the Power Egg, an aerial drone made by the same company. Inside the underwater drone, the battery is not removable, but inside the Power Egg, it is. It's smart. Using the same battery across multiple products saves a lot of money. All three of the propellers have black wires connecting to the small circuit board in the front, right next to that 4K camera and the front LED headlights. The drone is already pretty sweet, but if I could add one more thing, it would be the ability to float sideways instead of just forward and backward. It would require adding additional motors, but it would be nice to have more control while filming. It was super fun to take apart something that's actually waterproof. The waterproofing on this power is pretty intense, and I think it's time to go wash my hands. I'll toss a link in the video description with current pricing for this thing. Whether it's just for fun or actual industrial underwater inspections, it's a pretty useful little tool. Thanks enough for watching, and I'll see you around.